hello so welcome back to the mathematics class so let's continue from where we had stopped in our last class we had talked about introduction to number line rational numbers irrational numbers real numbers and their decimal expansions and representing real numbers on the number line now in this class we'll learn about operation on real numbers and finally laws of exponents for real numbers and as we go on we'll do certain examples to make our concepts clear so let's start off with our topic operation on real numbers before beginning operations we should uh, first know certain rules let us know the rules of square roots like if we are given square root of two numbers then we can write its equivalent as square root of the first number times square root of the second number suppose for example if we take square root of 2 times 3 okay then this can be expanded as square root of 2 times square root of 3 right in other words square root of 6 square root of 6 can be expanded as square root of t uh, 2 times square root of 3 okay in this way if we want to break the square root the number that is contained inside a square root we can break in multiplication form so let's talk about the next rule next rule state that if two numbers are in the form of uh, division are in the form of a fraction inside a square root they can be broken up in a similar fashion where we can put square root on individual numbers the number on the numerator as well as on the number at the denominator right here you can see initially the whole fraction had been contained under a square root finally we we have taken the individual numbers under square root okay suppose let us take similar example suppose we are given square root of 2 by 3 we can expand the square root or we can simplify the square root as square root 2 divided by square root 3 right in this way we can uh, just uh, make the square root simpler because we can ca calculate square root of 2 we can also calculate square root of 3 right by putting in the ca calculator directly in uh, also if you know the value of square root of 2 and the value of square root of 3 up to some decimal points you can directly put in the values to get the answer for this square root of a fraction right now let's uh, come to certain examples right our first example states if a square root is subtracted from itself we get a rational number 0 right see on the left hand side we had two irrational numbers but since we are subtracting the irrational number from the number itself we are getting a, a rational number or rather a whole number in this case on the right hand side that means it need not be always correct that whenever we add or subtract irrational numbers we will always get irrational numbers we may get a we may get a rational number or any real number right 
and in the second example as you can see if we multiply two square roots if we multiply two square roots the same square root with itself we get a rational number okay we get a rational number which is contained inside the square root you can see square root of 3 if multiplied twice gives us the number 3 itself why because we get it from the last example last rule square root of 3 times the square root of 3 if it is given with the rule which we had talked about earlier square root of a b can be written as square root of a times square root of b here this can be taken as square root of a this can be taken as square root of b and finally when these are multiplied we should get square root of a b as the answer right now here a and b both are the same number so here we should get 9 right now what is square root of 9 square root of 9 is the number 3 itself okay square root of 9 is the number 3 itself right this is how we get the number 3 from the multiplication of two irrational numbers we are using the same rules which we had learnt there right now for the third result square root of 17 divided by square root of 17 itself so square root of 17 divided by square root of 17 we are using the rule right we, we are using the second rule square root of a divided by square root of b is equal to square root of a by square root of b right we are using this rule now here a and b we can take as 17 both are the same number so what we will get here we will get here square root of 17 divided by square root of 17 itself so finally we get the result as square root of 1 whose square root is 1 itself right so this is how we get 1 out of division of two same irrational numbers right so let us look at some other examples here you can see in the first example 2 plus square root of 3 how can we simplify it now a rational number cannot be added with an irrational number so if at any point of time you get an answer in the form where you have a rational part as well as an irrational part you must leave the answer like that only because further simplif simplification is not possible 2 plus square root of 3 cannot be further simplified so it should be written in this form only now similarly a rational number and an irrational number cannot be multiplied with each other in the same fashion if at any point of time you get an answer in multiplication form where you get a rational part and an irrational part your answer should be kept in that same way because further simplification is not possible after that now for such numbers where a rational number is divided by an irrational number or an irrational number is divided by a rational number in the same fashion it cannot be further simplified right that means in other words whatever be the operations a rational number cannot be operated on an irrational number to get something new right the rational part should be kept as it is and the irrational part should be kept as it is in the earlier form now in the last example 
you can see we have done square root of 15 times square root of 3. Now from the first rule we are breaking square root of 15 as square root of 5 times square root of 3. Right? This is how we break square root of 15. This portion is square root of 15 and we have square root of 3. Right? Now from this example what have we got? Square root of 3 times square root of 3 gives us 3. It gives us 3. And we have in product form square root of 5. Right? Now from this rule as rational numbers cannot be operated on irrational numbers right so we must keep the answer in this form only you can see we need not put this uh, cross sign to imp imply that they are in multiplication form we can straight away write 3 square root 5 ok 3 square root 5 that means is equivalent to this product square root of 15 times square root of 3 ok so let's move forward now let's talk about addition and subtraction of such numbers where we have irrational numbers as well as rational numbers and maybe we also have irrational numbers combined with rational numbers right now since irrational numbers cannot be operated on rational numbers but irrational numbers can be operated on them on in on other ir irrational numbers so rational parts should be operated separately irrational parts should be operated separately so when we are operating on rational parts we should consider the, uh, the irrational part as merely variable itself ok we, are, we should consider merely as variable like we have used in algebra in algebra as you can recall suppose we have to add 2x times uh, 2x plus 3x right suppose we had to add 2x plus 3x so what would the answer be we would just add 2 and 3 right we should get 5 and we should keep x intact right the same procedure is followed here just in place of x if we write square root of 2 suppose suppose we write here square root of 2 and we try to add it with square root of 3 ok uh, suppose um, we are try to add it with 3 square root 2 you, you have known till now that such kind of numbers exist as further they can't be simplified we can write in this form only you can tell it there are 2 square root 2's and th 3 square root 2's and in all how many square root 2's uh, should be there there should be 5 square root of 2 right that means what we should get here we should get here is 5 square root of 2 right now in the similar fashion you can see square root of 2 is just considered as a variable and kept intact only the rational part is operated right the rational part is only operated so with this no knowledge let's try to solve this question we should add this big number with this number right these are two numbers as you can see uh, two square roots cannot be operated on each other here as both are not the same right here one more information if two square roots do not have the same number inside them they cannot be operated on each other square root of 2 should be kept as intact and square root of 3 should be kept intact as they cannot be combined right so if we are trying to add them let's see what it happens first we remove the brackets and write it in a straight away fashion you can see if we consider square roots or the irrational parts as variables there are two kinds of variables here square root of 2 and square root of 3 right so what we should do is club the square root of 2's at one side 
club the square root of 3 is at other side and then finally take the sum. Okay. So here what are the square root of 2 terms? This one is a square root 2 term and this one is a square root 2 term. Right? Now we should club these two together and this one is a square root 3 term. This one is a square root 3 term. Right? And we should club these two together as well. So, finally, we have clubbed them. See, you can see all the similar terms are in the same bracket. And still now you can observe that we are considering the square roots as merely va variables. As square root of 2 cannot be operated on square root of 3, we have kept them separate. And finally, if we add them up, we get the answer as 3 times square root 2 plus 2 times square root 3. Right? And you can see we can't far further simplify this result. Why is this so? Because terms under the square root is different. Right? If the terms under the square root is different, we consider the two square roots as different types of variables. Suppose we consider this as x. Uh, suppose we consider this as x and we consider this as y. So you can see what we have the result as 3x plus 2y, right? We have the result in this form. So obviously 3x can't be added with 2y. In the similar way, 3 square root 2 can't be added with 2 square root 3. So we should keep our answer in this form and this is our final answer. Right. And let's talk about multiplication and division. As uh, for addition, sub subtraction of two numbers is of the same fashion. Just in place of plus sign, we need to keep the minus sign and expand the brackets and the rest of the procedures are same as the earlier slide. Right. So let's talk about multiplication. Now if you are asked to multiply two numbers and here you can see the two numbers have the same numbers under their square roots, right? And in multiplication, it doesn't matter whether two numbers are uh, having different types of square root or not. They can be multiplied or they can be operated on each other unless and until they don't get clubbed with a addition sign or subtraction sign, okay? Till they are having multiplication sign between them or division sign between them, they can be operated on each other. Now let's see how we multiply 6 square root 5 with 2 square root 5. So what we do is, we take the rational parts again together, right? We take the rational parts together and we take the irrational parts together. And how are we breaking this into such uh, multiplication form you can tell 6 root 5 6 root 5 can be written as 6 times square root of 5 right like we had seen in the uh, earlier slides it can be written like this and similarly 2 square root 5 can be written as 2 times square root 5 so you can see we have 6 times square root 5 here which is 6 root 5 and 2 times square root 5 which is 2 square root 5, right? So what we do, first we multiply the rational part. From there, here we get 12, 6 to the 12. And you can see these are similar terms, right? So square root of 5 times square root of 5 gives us the term which is inside the square root only. And thus we get 5 as the result of the multiplication of these two irrational numbers same irrational numbers right so we get the final result as 60 right L let me repeat the steps you first you have two irrational numbers right 6 root 5 and 2 root 5 so what you do you take the rational parts together multiply them separately you take the irrational parts together 
multiply them separately and finally whatever result you get you multiply them with each other to get the final result right in the same fashion we can do division like let's take an example if we are asked to do 8 root 15 divided by 2 root 5 suppose we are asked to multiply these two numbers you can see the numbers inside the square roots are not the same and whenever you see a number lesser than the uh, earlier one under the square root like here it is 5 which is less than 15 it should come to your mind somewhat or the other here square root of 5 can be brought right it can be brought right square root of 15 can be broken down into square root of 5 times square root of 3 right so let's look at the answer so here we have tried to divide these two numbers 8 root 15 and 2 root 15 a uh, 2 root 5 right 8 root 15 divided by 2 root 5 so what we get to uh, make the square root of 5 cancel out what we have done is we have broken out uh, square root of 15 into square root of 5 times square root of 3 right and what you can see is from the numerator and denominator we can strike off square root of 5 or in other words we divide the numerator and the denominator with square root of 5 right we can do it because it is an equivalent operation right so finally what we get from here we get 8 times square root of 3 which we can write as 8 root 3 and divided by 2 right so what we do here is the same thing first we club the real parts together and the imaginary parts together and then we multiply them together so what we do we take 8 by 2 first whatever be the value of 8 by 2 we will multiply it with square root of 3 right so what we get here we get 4 times square root of 3 which gives us our final answer right so let me repeat the steps once more first you try to see whether a bigger square root can be broken down into simpler parts to represent another square root which has a lesser magnitude than the earlier one and then if they if you are asked to divide them you can straight away cancel the smaller factor with the bigger factor by simple div division methods and thus after that you club the real parts together and imaginary parts together and finally you product them and get the final answer right so let's talk about further rules further rules which are applied are here like these are a bit difficult rule but if you look at them bit by bit you will find that they are really really very simple and are quite similar to what you had learnt in earlier classes like here the first rule uh, is based on the distributive law of numbers right like here you are trying to multiply the sum of two square roots with the sum of any other two square roots right so how do we get this result out of it so let's try try to get this uh, answer right so first we start with the left hand side so what we do we try to expand this bracket right and take this square root of c plus square root of d as a chunk right we take this as a chunk or take this as a uh, new variable suppose we take this as e right we take this as e and what we do is suppose we have square root of a here and we have square root of b here this is some square root of b here right and we have e 
now according to the distributive law this number should be multiplied to this and after that this sign should come in between and after that this number should be multiplied to this right so we should get square root of a times e plus square root of b times e right and this is what we have got here you can see square root of a times e square root of b times e right so let's see how we can further solve this and you can see once again we can use the distributive law again like here a should be multiplied to c first and then a should be multiplied to d right using the distributive law and similarly in this case also b is multiplied to c and after that b is multiplied to d with this sign in between them so we have multiplied this you can see a square root a times square root c square root a times square root d with the plus sign as was in here and in the same fashion we have done in the second part also right so finally from the laws we had learnt earlier you can see square root of a and square root of c can be clubbed together right square root of a times square root of c can be clubbed under a single square root as square root of a c right similarly square root of a times square root of d can be clubbed as square root of ad square root of b and square root of c can be clubbed as square root bc and square root of b and square root of d should be clubbed as square root bd great now what we are doing we are just putting this signs in between them and let's see what is the outcome yes we have got the result as was in here right ac plus ad plus bc uh, plus bd and all of all of them under individual square roots right and now you can see we can't further simplify them and why is it so because for all of them the numbers under the square roots are not the same right for addition and subtraction we cannot operate between two square roots whose inner value is not the same and for multiplication and division we can operate for multiplication and division we can operate the two numbers with different square roots within them right just remember this rule and let's see we can uh, imply 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 that uh, earlier earlier rule in the coming coming examples like here the second rule which we are getting here is uh, square root of a plus square root of b times square root of a minus square root of b right so what is happening here i think you are getting uh, some similar effect right a plus b into a minus b right what what have you got in earlier classes a plus b into a minus b it is a square minus b square right that means what we have got in earlier classes we have got uh, a plus b times a minus b we have got a plus b times a minus b as a square minus b square right and here you uh, you are using the same principle like this see what we are getting here if we try to simplify uh, the uh, left hand side you can see we are getting square root of a here in place of a which should be squared right square root of a should be squared minus we are getting square root of b which should be squared once again and what are we getting as the result we are getting here square root of a when multiplied twice 
gives a itself right as we have seen in the earlier example remember square root of 3 times square root of 3 gave the number 3 itself similarly square root of a times square root of 3 uh, square root of a must give square, uh, a itself right the value which is contained inside the square root and here we get b square root of b times square root of b gives the result as b itself right so we are getting the same result as stated here we are using here two laws the law which we had learned earlier is square root, the square root of uh, same number when multiplied twice gives the number itself and the second rule is a square minus b square can be written as a plus b into a minus b so let's see the next rule or rather you can call it an example itself because we are only using the rules we had learnt earlier right here you can see the same thing a here a is given right a and square root of b is given you can see both the numbers are not in square root form so what you should do it is a plus square root b times a minus square root b so what you should do here the first number should be squared as usual and the second number should also be squared which is b squared okay so finally what we get the answer is a square minus b why b square root of b times square root of b gives the number b itself right so we get the final answer as given in the right hand side so you are getting this point right what are we using we are using just the simple rules which states square root of a number when multiplied twice gives the number itself and a square minus b square equals a plus b into a minus b here i think you you all of you know about the rule a plus b whole square and what is a plus b whole square it is a square plus 2ab plus b square right and here we are applying the same law to square roots if we want to add two square roots and then try to find out the square the square of the sum so what we should do from here what we should get is square root of a square we should get square root of a square plus 2 square root a times square root b right 2 ab and and we should get here plus square square root of b square we should get square root of b square right we should get here now finally when we take this the sim in the similar fashion square root of a whole square gives us a itself plus 2 times you can just recall the rule we had learnt a uh, few slides earlier square root of a times square root of b we can club them as square root a b right we are clubbing them up as square root ab so we get till now a plus 2 square root ab plus b right and this matches with the result given here so we have done it correctly so let me repeat once again a plus b whole square we are using this formula into finding out the square of the sum of two square roots okay so what we are doing here we are just applying the no formula normally we are first squaring the first number then squaring then uh, adding adding it with twice the product of these two numbers square root a and square root b and then adding them up with the square of second number right and using the rules which we had learnt in earlier slide we are finding out the result 
okay so let's apply what we have learned till now in finding out the answer of this simplification now if we if you are asked to simplify this uh, a kind of statement if you are given to simplify first you should look whether it can be further simplified or not in this case you can see this can be simplified right it is a product of an irrational number with an irrational number right I think you remember that the sum of a rational number and an irrational number is always an irrational number right and same with the sub subtraction itself the number uh, the rational number when subtracted with, a, with an irrational number gives an irrational number itself okay so let's proceed with this simplification first what we do we apply distributive law as we had learned in early, earlier slides right here we have taken this as a chunk we have taken this this bracket as a chunk first we multiplied 3 with this this bracket and then we multiplied square root of 3 with this bracket as you can see here right 3 times this whole chunk 2 minus square root 2 plus square root 3 times that same chunk 2 minus square root 2 right now we are applying distributive law once more we are multiplying 3 times 2 to get 6 we are again multiplying 3 times square root 2 to get 3 square root 2 right and we must maintain the sign here minus as here it is minus it's minus only right and then we are doing the same thing square, square root 3 multiplied with 2 we get 2 square root 3 and square root 3 multiplied with square root 2 we get square root of 3 times 2 right we are what we are getting square root of 3 multiplied with square root of 2 when we are multiplying two square roots we can club them up in one single square root as the product of those two numbers itself right so we are getting square root of 3 times 2 which we can write as square root of 6 right and now you can see there is uh, no term with only rational number there is no term with the same square root 2 there is no term with square root 3 and there is no term with square root 6 other than the terms given here right so this should be our final answer okay because whatever the square roots given here we cannot operate on them as their values inside the square root is different for everyone right now let's do one more example let us simplify this one 2 plus square root 5 whole square whenever you see whole square the formula must strike in your mind a plus b whole square is a square plus 2ab plus b square right so here we are using the same thing what we are doing taking the first number squaring it 2 square then 2 times first number producted with uh, second number 2ab and finally this b square as you can see here find the second number squared right and when we are done with this uh, cal calculation 2 square gives us 4 and this this product give, uh, gives us 4 root 5 and square root 5 when squared or square root 5 when multiplied with itself gives the number 5 back right okay so we are getting here 4 plus 4 square root 5 plus 5 right and you can see we have two rational numbers here 4 and 5 right so rational numbers can be added together so what we are doing we are adding 4 and 5 to get 9 and there are no numbers with square root of 5 uh, other than 4 square root 5 right so we, uh, we know that this can this can't be far further simplified and we must keep the answer 
as we have got in this step. So our final answer is 9 plus 4 square root 5. Okay, now let's talk about ra rationalization. Now, uh, suppose we want to locate an, uh, an irrational number in the form, suppose uh, 1 by square root 2. Suppose anyone asks you to locate this number, 1 by square root 2 on the number line. Now, it is very easy to locate the number uh, square root 2 on the number line. As we had learnt in earlier class, it is uh, greater than 1, less than 2. Its value is close, close to 1.414, right? Its value is close to 1.414. As soon as we get uh, closer to 1.414 on the number line, we can say that approximately square, is, square root of 2 is around this point. Right. Finding out square root of 2 is not so difficult. But if this number is in the fraction form or it, it is in the denominator, it is very difficult to plot them on the number line. Okay. So, a method called rationalization or making the denominator free from square roots as stated here, this method is called rationalization. This method is applied so that we can make the cal calculations with irrational fractions easier as well as plot those uh, fractional irrational numbers on the number line. Right? Now you know the definition of rational rationalization making the denominator free from square roots. Right? Now how do we rationalize 1 by square root 2? How do we make this denominator free from square root? L uh, from the earlier examples as we have seen, if we multiply the uh, same square root with itself, we get the number which was inside the square root and the number is free from square roots, right? The number was a rational number. When we multiply two same irrational numbers, we get a rational number, right? Here what we have done, you can see we have multiplied the numerator as well as denominator with the same number square root 2, right? Now in the numerator 1 times square root of 2 is square root of 2 only, but in the denominator what you observe is square root of 2 times square root of 2 gives 2, right? And this 2 is free from square roots. Right, this 2 is free from square roots. Now you can plot square root of 2 by 2 on a number line easily. Just you have to divide 1.414 with 2 and just plot on the number line. See, it has become quite easy, right? So, this method which we are applying here is rationalization or making the denominator rational. Okay, so let us repeat the steps. To make the de denominator rational, we should apply uh, uh, the rules which we had learnt in earlier uh, slides to, to get a product which is rational. Okay, we are trying to get a, a rational number from an irrational number and we should apply the rules we had learnt till now to get it. Right? We are applying here the first rule which we had learnt square root of a times square root of b gives square root of ab or the number the square root of a number when multiplied with itself gives the number back. Right and this as I have told you this makes it easy for us to represent on the number line. Right now if you were given a number like this 1 by 2 plus square root 3. Now you if you multi, if you try to multiply 2 plus square root 3 with 2 plus square root 3 itself, what you end up with? You end up with uh, if you try to multiply this with itself, what you end up with is squaring the number, right? Or first you square this number. 2 square is 4, then you multiply 2 times 
टू टाइम्स ए टाइम्स बी एंड फाइनली यू डू बी स्क्वायर एंड बी स्क्वायर इज थ्री राइट वट यू गेट एज अ रिजल्ट इज सेवन एडिंग दिस रैशनल नंबर ऑफ प्लस टू टाइम्स टू इज फोर फोर स्क्वायर रूट थ्री राइट वी आर गेटिंग अ नंबर विच इज नॉट एग्जैक्टली फ्री फ्रॉम स्क्वायर रूट वी आर स्टिल लेफ्ट विद दिस स्क्वायर रूट राइट देन वी कॉन्ट अप्लाई दिस रूल नाउ विच रूल शुड वी अप्लाई जस्ट रिमेंबर वी वी हैड डन द रूल ए प्लस बी इंटू ए माइनस बी गिव दस ए स्क्वायर माइनस बी स्क्वायर सो वॉट इज हैपनिंग हियर एवरी टर्म इंडिव्यूजली इज गेटिंग स्क्वायर राइट now if we square we can square this term root 3 we are getting the number 3 which is rational right so what we should do here we should multiply the denominator with 2 minus square root 3 to get 2 square minus square root of 3 whole square right in the denominator now if we multiply this in the denominator to get a rational number we should multiply the same thing in the numerator as well so in the numerator we are getting 2 minus square root 3 and if we if you multiply this number with this number by using the rules we had learned earlier you should end up with 4 minus 3 right and since 4 minus 3 is 1 we can drop the denominator and simply write the numerator as 2 minus square root 3 that means 2 minus uh, 1 by 2 plus square root 3 after rationalization gives the number 2 minus square root 3 now essentially as we are multiplying the same number in the numerator and denominator the rationalized number must be equal to the initial number right this two number must be equal as we are performing an operation which does not change the value of the fraction okay so let's talk with another example suppose we are given this number something is in the numerator as well 5 divided by square root 3 minus square root 5 now how will we do this we will apply the same logic we had done earlier we should square this two terms individually and to do this which rule should we apply we should apply a square minus b square as a plus b into a minus b right so with this we must multiply as here it is minus sign we should multiply something with a plus sign so here you can see we have multiplied this number with the similar thing just changing the plus sign and uh, what we are getting is 3 minus 5 or in other words we are just having a number which is the squared value of the individual square roots right 3 minus 5 it is the same as uh, applying that rule a minus a, a minus b times a plus b now this numerator should be kept as itself and multiplied here right because uh, this is an irrational number and this is a rational number if we Uh, multiply them together uh, we cannot op operate on e operate them on each other right because both of them are not of similar types finally we get the denominator as minus 2 and minus sign we can take above it is uh, we you can take right uh, so final answer as you can see here minus 5 times square root 3 plus square root 5 divided by 2 right here here you can see the denominator is once again rationalized or uh, the denominator is made free from square roots and we get a rationalized number which is easier for us to plot on the graph or perform operations on to okay so let's come to the next topic the laws of exponents now the laws of exponents for real numbers is quite similar to the laws of exponents 
which you had learnt in earlier classes for integers. Like the first rule you had learnt a to the power n times a to the power n or if two numbers are in multiplication form their powers gets added up right a to the power n plus n right and the same ha happens with uh, real numbers also like rational numbers also with irrational numbers also so the second rule is uh, a to the power m whole to the power n and the result which we get is m and n gets multiplied with each other right and uh, the third rule is a to the power m by a to the power n if we do if we divide two numbers what happens is the powers get subtracted now here it is logical right if they are multiplied the powers get added if they are divided the powers must get subtracted and the final rule a to the power m b to the power n if two numbers are there with the same powers we can club them together and make them as a whole power like a b whole to the power m right now let's talk about certain notations which we use a to the power minus n is not is uh, understood as 1 by a to the power n right because a negative power in any other ways can't be defined negative power means the number is divided negative power means number is divided like 3 to the power minus 2 gives 1 by 3 to the power 2 which is equivalent to 1 by 9 a to the power 1 by n can be represented as nth root of a right nth root of a means uh, a should be a product of such a number which when multiplied n times give a and the result of this nth root which will be the number which was multiplied n times to get a right now let's look at an example to understand it better like if you do 8 to the power 1 by 3 cube root of a or the third root of 8 right third root of 8 now here the meaning of third root of 8 means you have to find out a number which when multiplied three times gives the number 8 right and which number which uh, which number when multiplied uh, three times gives 8 it is 2 right 2 times 2 gives 4 4 times 2 gives 8 so 2 can be multiplied thrice to get the number 8 So final and now we move on to the coming examples. We are applying the rules we had known earlier. Like uh, first example states 2 cube times 2 to the power half. Right? You can see the base is same. It is 2. That means when these two numbers are in multiplication form, the powers should get added up. 3 plus half that means 2 to the power we can get as 7 by 2 right this is our final answer and to get the precise value you can put this value in a cal calculator to get the final answer and it is actually not needed and second example states if we do 5 to the power minus 3 whole to the power 4 by 3 we what we get is 5 to the power minus 3 times 4 by 3 right because this is at a whole power form so we must multiply the powers and finally you can see 3 times 4, 4 by 3 this 3 gets cancelled out and we are left with a single value 4 and thus our final answer is 5 to the power minus 4 right so our next example is an application of the third uh, logic which, which we had seen 2 to the power 9 divided by 2 to the power 5 the same base with the different powers has been uh, written in a division form and thus the power which is at the bottom should be subtracted from the power which is at the top right so what we get here 
2 to the power 9 minus 5. So finally we get 2 to the power 4 as the answer and the result which we are getting is 16. Right? 2 to the power 4 is 16. And the next example, the fourth rule which we had learnt, 2 to the power half times 3 to the power half. Two numbers are, the two bases are different, but the powers are the same. So what we can do is club the two numbers, right? We are clubbing the two numbers, 2 times 3 to the power half gives us 6 to the power half, right? And when we are writing 6 to the power half, we can also write it as 2th uh, root of 6, right? And the 2th root of 6, we call it as square root itself. The 2th root or the 2nd root of 6 is termed as square root. The 3rd root of 6 is termed as cube root. Right. And 4th root, you can call it 4th root itself, 5th root, 6th root and further and further. Right. So, see, it is the value comes out to be square root of 6 only. Now, you can just relate to the rule which we had learnt earlier. 2 to the power half can be written as square root of 2. 3 to the power half can be written as square, to square root of 3. Now when we multiply them, as we had learnt earlier, we should get whole square root of 2 times 3, right? And finally, we get the result as square root of 6. It is the same form. They are just represented in a different fashion with exponents but they are essentially the same form right you can see here so we are done with the uh, first chap chapter in our class 9 textbook in this class what we have learned we have learned about operation or real numbers like addition subtraction multiplication division and then we had used this concept for simplifying certain uh, equations right when two numbers were in multi multiplication form or in division form or in addition form we had uh, tried to obtain the sim simplified answer right and f next or just now we had learnt about rationalization where we are making the denominator free from square roots and just now we had completed the laws of exponents of real numbers which is exactly the same as laws of exponent of integers which you had learnt in earlier classes and thank you.